Violet, when walking through the woods, what comes to mind? Little Red Riding Hood by Hansel and Gretel. I think those stories were told to make sure children didn't wander off into the forest. I like to explore, but my family always comes with me. One day, I will get to explore with my friends. When you're older, Violet, speaking of friends, look who it is. Hi, everyone. Hello. We are in some woods near our home in San Jose, California. The trees are magical. This is one of my favorite places to hike. It's the Buena Vista Trail. Buena Vista means good view. It is a good view. The trees are manzanita trees. They're my favorite of all trees. I love the maroon bark and the dusty green leaves. The trunks and branches are so twisted. Speaking of twisty trees, guess where we're going today? My guess would be a place with lots of trees to the woods, but where? Today, we are going to Dartmoor National Park in Devon, England. Tony's friend that selected this location is John Hawks, a parish priest and a retired art gallery director. John Hawks chose a small oak wood called Wistman's Wood within Dartmoor National Park as an important location for Tony to paint for his exploring beauty journey. Why? Because the ancient oaks there, some as old as 400 years, seem magical and mysterious. These trees grow among big granite boulders, so the area was left alone instead of turned into farmland or ranchland years ago. In this episode, we are going to discover Dartmoor National Park and the woods that are an important part of this place. We will discover the beauty of Tony Foster's artwork, Wisman's Wood Looking South Southwest. We have a song about the woods to share. We will get to know about some of the animals that make these woods their home. And finally, a project with Violet. It is a simple one that will help you on your way into the world of observation. We will learn techniques you can use on your own adventures out discovering the woods, sitting still, observing, listening, smelling, and feeling. And we will talk about finding nature where you are. Are you ready to go to the woods? Leaving the foster. We are going to Dartmoor National Park to discover the woods there. It is around 200 miles from London. Dartmoor National Park is roughly 368 square miles. That's two times larger than the city of San Jose, California, where Violet and her family live. This big park has river valleys open grasslands, and also woods. Woods are a dense collection of trees in a small area. The type of trees in the woods we are exploring today are oak trees. And we are landing right in the middle of Tony Foster's artwork, Wisman's Wood, looking south-southwest. What do you think when you look at this artwork? I think a fairy could be hiding in plain sight. While Tony was painting there, he wrote in his journal that he did not want to disturb any pixies, which are found in folklore and are a lot like fairies. Then I think a pixie might be hiding in plain sight. I want this place to stay as beautiful as we found it for fairies, pixies, and all of us. What do you notice? I notice the twisty trees and the big rocks that are covered with moss. 
It looks like it would be a high place to walk. Did you know that some of these moss and lichens have been growing and developing for hundreds of years? That's why we must be very careful where we step and where we sit. We should stay on the path. We would not want to hurt this beautiful place. Tony writes in his diary notes at the bottom of the mat. Leave no trace. We have a song about the mystical woods Tony painted. To the woods, sung by Anna. And I heard a thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. A thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. The National Park where Tony painted has twisted and ancient trees. A thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. Tales tell of mystical magic in this place. In this place. Tales tell of mystical magic in this place. In this place. Not wishing to disturb the pixies, Tony Foster leaves no trace. Tales tell of mystical magic in this place. In this place. There are some oak trees that live for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. There are some oak trees that live for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Producing acorns constantly. There are many animals to feed. There are some oak trees that live for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. A thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. A thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. The National Park where Tony painted has twisted and ancient trees. A thick grove of trees is called the woods. Called the woods. What do you wonder? I wonder what creatures make this magical place their home. Lurking in a nook, somewhere near an old tree trunk, or between rocks an adder lays. An adder, also known as a common viper, is a type of snake that is abundant, which means there are many snakes in this wood. Are they poisonous? Yes, they are. They are the United Kingdom's only poisonous snake. Its bite is known to be painful and is specifically dangerous for the very old and very young. You would rarely see an adder while hiking through these woods because adders would rather not see or bite you. Their precious venom comes in handy when they are on the hunt for their food. Our next creature better be on the lookout as I'm sure an adder would love to make it a meal. The hazel dormouse is protected throughout Dartmoor National Park. It is an endangered or threatened species. Its population has decreased by half since 2000. What can we do to help? The best thing that we can do is not disturb animals. Parklands have been set aside to help with conservation. Support your national parks. Explore and enjoy, but do not disturb or disrupt. That means don't take things that don't belong to you. And please take away trash that you brought in. So if you see a sleeping dormouse, leave it alone. Dormouse? Like the one in the teapot from Alice in Wonderland? Similar, it is a small mouse with rusty or reddish brown fur. You may find it nesting near the base of a hazel tree, as hazelnuts are a favorite food, along with berries and insects. The hazel dormouse spends much of its time hibernating, and it is known to snore. <laughs> Plus, this animal is nocturnal, so it is awake at night and sleeps during the day. 
spending all this time resting and might not notice our next creature fly by. The woods are alive with butterflies. Many different species fly around the woods. It may be hard for larger animals to get around the craggy granite rocks, but butterflies can fly around them easily. They have names such as speckled wood, white admiral, and purple hair streak. I wish I had purple hair streaks. That's a cool name for a butterfly. The purple hair streak is the only butterfly in the United Kingdom that is entirely dependent on the oak tree. Luckily, the place Tony created his artwork has many oak trees. I noticed the souvenirs. What does a map tell us? The map tells us the location where Tony painted in Devon. I like that special way he displays a real oak leaf. It reminds me of a jewel box. And that leaf is very similar to the collection of oak leaves Tony painted as a souvenir. Wow, so many leaves. They look real, but they are painted. Tony will often paint his souvenirs while working on location. We do not take souvenirs from national parks unless we get them from the gift shop. You are right, Violet. There are ways to make memories or keepsakes that do not involve taking things from beautiful places. You mean like taking a picture? Yes, or you can make a sketch or a rubbing. Just be careful not to crush or destroy plant life. Do not pick the flowers. Yes, you do not pick flowers unless you are in a place that allows it. National parks do not allow people to pick flowers there. Nature journaling is a perfect way to record what you experience out in nature. Your journal can be your souvenir. Speaking of nature journaling, we have a quick project that can take you on your next journey. Today's project with Violet is a simple nature journal that you can make in minutes. If you don't have a nature journal handy, then you can just make your own using simple materials. Materials you will need. A six inch by nine inch sheets of toned paper, hole punch, 30 inch length of yarn, optional colored pencils, also optional stickers. Step one, stack the sheets of paper together and fold them in half. Step two, using the hole punch, punch a hole in the top and bottom of the sheets of paper. Make sure to center the hole punch over the fold line. Step three, thread the length of yarn through the holes of the paper making sure the ends are all together on one side. Close to the paper, tie a knot in the yarn to secure it. Step four, knot the ends of your yarn together to make a loop. This will allow you to hold the journal on your wrist. Step five, decorate your cover however you would like. Use stickers, draw a picture, or write your name. Whatever you choose. Now you can go off on an adventure and create your own nature journal souvenir. For your nature journaling adventure, you will need your brand new nature journal, writing utensils, Violet and I like colored pencils and markers. Optional, a white gel pen. This is nice if you need to make highlights on that toned paper. There are a few important things to remember when we go out to nature journal. Safety first, do not wander off alone. Make sure you can always see your adult. 
have fun. Nature journaling is not about making the perfect picture or piece of art. You are an observer of nature. Explore, think, and wonder. Ask questions and study your surroundings. Sit quietly. In time as you practice, your skill will improve. This is your nature journal and it is uniquely you. If you are new to nature journaling, there are a few questions you can ask yourself to get you started on this journey of exploration. What do you think? What do you wonder? What do you sense? What do you see or smell or hear <coughs> or feel? If you would like instructions to make your very own nature journal or print one of our coloring pages, go to www.thefoster.org forward slash Anna and Violet. What's wonderful about nature is that it's just about everywhere. You might find it out camping or at a park. You can also find it where you live. Perhaps it is a backyard or tree in your neighborhood. You might find a plant growing out of cement. Beauty is everywhere. And we loved exploring the beauty of Dartmoor National Park in Devon with you. We cannot wait for our next journey. Where will we end up? At the top of a mountain in France. Checking out rock formations in the Atacama? See you next time! Thanks for joining us on our journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and visit www.thefoster.org. Yeah. <laughs>